Yeah, yeah there's kind of those kind of yeah. more the, uh, CSOs yeah. and GA type yeah. groups. Yes, sir. Recording in progress. Session. I've just come to observe how it works. You know, the yeah. session. No, 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 they're not. Oh, they're the, they're the ones from the previous session. Okay. No, no, it's fine. No, I'm, I'm going to come to the next one, but I'm going to like spy on see how it's done because I haven't had any like special links or information about what it means to be an on-site moderator so I'm just trying to work out what it yeah what what it what they're doing yeah thanks and then they have for you another which is called answer answer and then he, he tells you okay is this station uh, ready to go to you if yes uh, if, if, if he says in the answer if he says yes
Jesse, are you in? Can you hear me, Jesse? Uh, yes. Can Professor Tao, Xiaofeng Tao, have the authority of the host? Uh, he cannot open his uh, video now. All right. So, but uh, the technique is working here. There are a lot of people here in the room. So we we still have. So, oh, hi, Xiaofeng Tao. Hi. Questions. You can see it. Hi, Xiaofeng Tao. Yeah. Yeah. Good to see you all. Perfect. Yeah, we can see you now. We can hear your voice. Yeah, we can hear you now. Xiaofeng Tao, could you just say something because I couldn't hear you? Unfortunately, there is no tone. Jesse, could you hear him? We can't hear you now. Can you reconnect your audio devices? Hi, Jesse. Yes. Jesse. Oh, you can. Okay, good. I can hear you. Hi, Jesse. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you, Professor Sun. Okay. So I think it's only something tall. Yeah, we we can't hear. We can we cannot hear you here. Sorry. Hi, horse. You can text your audio devices. Hello, good morning from Berlin, Germany to everyone. Hi. Good morning. Hi, Ricardo. Good Hi, how are you? Hi. Nice to see you too. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Hi.
Sinh Viên Hi, Professor Gong. Welcome to join us. Good morning, everyone. Just for information, we are sorting out uh, a last technical problem, so please uh, bear with us uh, another maybe two to five minutes. Hi, 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 hi. Uh, can can you hear me? Yeah, you can hear me. Hi, I'm I'm uh, sorry that uh, Professor Xiaofeng Tao he still has some troubles connecting uh, connecting to his uh, workshop. So I might be the uh, substitute to to his uh, and be a a moderator, temporary moderator. So when are we going to start? Uh, oh, I think we Today. can start now. Oh really? Oh, it's, it's, I thought it was uh, four thirty p.m. Oh, it's not. Okay, we can start now. Okay. Alright, Yu I'm the on-site moderator, so in case you need support, just let me know. Huh? Do you want to start? We, the room is actually fully packed now. <laughs> A lot of interest. Okay, uh, let, let's start. So, I'll uh, speak on behalf 
of uh, Professor Xiaofeng Tao. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's workshop session number 217. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of Xiaofeng Tao and uh, Professor Xiao. Uh, professor Tao is a professor at Beijing University of Post and Telecommunications. And uh, he is also the vice chair of consultative committee of UN Information Technology, China Association for Science and Technology. And I will chair on behalf of Xiao Hong Tao uh, today's workshop. Uh, the name of the workshop is Joint Effort to Build a Responsible and a Sustainable Metaverse. The term metaverse was introduced in 1992, which is 30 years ago today, supported by a series of advanced technologies. Metaverse may become a representative industry of new era of technology revolution. It's a virtual world linked and created through scientific and technological means, and it interacts with the real world. Metaverse can be further considered as a digital living place with a new social system. That means it will change people's lifestyle and drive the development of digital economy. Because there are still many metaverse related but unsolved problems, the metaverse concept cannot be unified at current stage. Some critics claim that we need more time to be ready to create such a virtual world on issues such as privacy, information, information use, health and regulatory challenges need to be addressed. I agree, uh, uh, we agree with them. However, those challenges, some of which may, may not have clear answers, don't stop us from building an ecolo uh, ecological, responsible and sustainable metaverse. The first step for us is to cooperate. So we gather here together to discuss how to build a metaverse that we dream, that we dream of. T -t -t today's session will focus on metaverse key challenges and governance issues. We will discuss what policy framework that can help us a healthy development of metaverse. Before we start our today's talk, I, uh, Xiaofeng, would like to uh, invite Professor Gong Ke to give us a opening speech. Uh, o o opening speech. <laughs> Professor Gong is the chair of the Consultative Committee on Information Technology of China Association for Science and Technology and the past president of the World Federation of Engineering Organizations. So let's welcome him. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Chen. Uh, at first, I would like to, uh, on behalf of the seminar organizer, the Consultative Committee on Information Technology of uh, uh, China Association of Science and uh, Technology to United Nations, I extend our warm welcome and sincere greetings to all participants present at the seminar, uh, offline or online. Uh, this seminar today uh, revolves around uh, building a responsible and sustainable metaverse. As just mentioned by Professor Chen, metaverse is now attracting great attention worldwide. And just uh, an hour ago, I just uh, heard a, a, a presentation on metaverse, on so-called industrial metaverse. So metaverse is not only a just a hybrid of various kinds of new generation information, uh, information technologies and innovations, but it also involves different uh, economical, social, legal and moral aspects. In terms of technology, uh, metaverse may uh, may uh, boost the the uh, application and development of uh, uh, virtual and uh, augmented re uh, reality, digital team, artificial intelligence, uh, uh, 5G, uh, uh, mobile communication, edge computing, blockchain, and so on and so, so forth. But uh, uh, in, in another uh, uh, aspect, from uh, a social and economical aspect, we could not just say uh, the, 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 the benefit uh, 
brought uh, <coughs> by the uh, new technology by metaverse we also uh, have to pay attention to the risks uh, they will uh, uh, brought up to the uh, human society we know uh, artificial intelligence is a key player in metaverse or behind metaverse especially uh, a generative uh, artificial intelligence which helps with uh, content production generation uh, uh, presentation distribution uh, to operation and the maintenance uh, in one word artificial intelligence is the strongest uh, impetus for metaverse development when we excitedly uh, uh, foresee that metaverse may energize the social eco uh, economical development and may significantly uh, revolutionary uh, 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 revolution revolutionize our economy and and the society we have to consider how to handle the potential uh, potential risks and challenges uh, during the metaverse development just as uh, the way we uh, deal with uh, artificial intelligence as you uh, all know the recommendations on the ethics of artificial intelligence released at its uh, 41st session of the unesco general uh, conference in last year exactly uh, one year before in november last year uh, that document is the first ever global standard setting instrument on the ethics of ai and has laid an important cornerstone for the ai governance to ensure its development and application uh, for the good of humankind and the planet the document i mean the recommendations uh, on the ethics of artificial intelligence stress the four core values which are first respect protection and promotion of human rights and fundamental freedoms and human dignity the second environment and ecosystem flourishing the third core value is ensure diversity and inclusiveness and the uh, fourth core value is living in a peaceful just and interconnected societies based on these four core values the recommendation raised out 10 principles they are first proportionality and do no harm second safety and security third fairness and non-discrimination fourth sustainability fifth right to privacy and data protection sixth human oversight and determination seventh transparency and explainability eighth responsibility and accountability ninth awareness and literacy tenth multi-stakeholder and adaptive governance and collaboration i do believe all these values and principles could and should also apply to metaverse development today's seminar is focusing on responsibility and sustainability of metaverse in order to tackle the uncertainty along with the technological revolution and the changes in the days to come on the in the years to come i'm so glad to have you experts uh, in multiple uh, fields and from different countries in this seminar to discuss the issues on the governance of metaverse development and i'm looking forward to your insightful speeches and inspiring dialogue today let us take this seminar as a step of our joint journey to a safe inclusion reliable and ethical metaverse featuring responsibility and sustainability so i stop here thank you thank you thank you for uh, professor gong for his excellent opening speech 
uh, go introduce us the core values and the principles that could uh, could and should apply to metaverse development. This is very impressive. So now let's start today's session. Here we have six experts to give us their perspective on building a responsible and sustainable metaverse. So uh, let's start right now. The, our first speaker is Horst Kremers from CoData Germany. His topic is elements of, of information digital strategy in supporting future mega trends in the uh, ecological, responsible, and sustainable metaverse. Matt Kremers, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Um, I'm very honored uh, to be your guest uh, today and uh, offer my thoughts uh, about uh, an ecological, responsible, and sustainable metaverse. Uh, thank you also very much for the introduction to the topic Kegong uh, uh, that you gave. Uh, um, I think uh, uh, you know that that we are in line with with a lot of these terms, and uh, so I, I I also refer to to some of the uh, principles you mentioned. Um, my presentation uh, today has a structure that I, sh I will shortly um, sketch uh, the problem of um, complexity from United Nations instruments uh, information management, uh, complexity management as such, transparency of algorithms, which I think is something very important uh, to the future, um, and pragmatics, uh, the doing of the whole thing, what happens, uh, the action models uh, that we need. The United Nations, I, if, if I go, if I mentioned only part of the text uh, I have in my slides, uh, uh, everyone be sure that in my last slide there is a download link mentioned and I also will send that to the chat so you have all the details in my presentation also for yourself uh, later. Uh, the United Nations Instruments, that is a, a header for something like uh, transnational declarations, conventions, treaties, frameworks and directives, and most of you know uh, those which normally we, we uh, deal with uh, on an everyday basis, that is UN Habitat, Sustainable Development, Sendai Framework for Risk Reduction, and so on. I don't want to mention that all, just to show you that we ha have a real uh, a, a, a big problem of complexity here because uh, United Nations in its text requires that we do something about uh, 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 synergies uh, for and from all these programs together. Now, what does that tell you for information systems? Uh, just for an example, only part of these problems, you see here we are dealing with the Senda Framework Agenda for Sustainable Development, Paris Agreement, Urban Agenda, and the systemic uh, approaches. We have a time span until 2030. Uh, we now, we are in the year 2021, nearly 2023, it's only uh, seven years <laughs> Uh, to go to, to 2030. At the time of 2030, we will have the next phase of all these programs in place. Now, if we want to prepare for seven years in United Nations, discussions have to start right, not, not right now, but we have to be prepared that there is a, a, a phase now, the door is open for uh, giving perspectives of what to do in the, after 2030. Uh, basic management pre principles, uh, don't, I don't also want to go into uh, too much of this. Uh, the, the question is uh, that uh, uh, this, is, this is general, but as you may, if you sc uh, screen through these topics, you may know that in most of them, there is, a, if you go with a, with a magnifying glass, what to do in practice. This is every uh, uh, item here is absolutely uh, crucial to uh, the su success of that interoperability that we talk about later. Uh, especially um, know that uh, quality indicators on confidence, weaknesses, uncertainties, error propagation in a complex interactive uh, uh, systems um, and vulnerabilities of the technology vulnerabilities, not in the disaster, but, but the, the, the problems that, that our technology 
will proliferate if it is not scalable in a very secure way, but uh, only scalable in uh, in amount of data. It shouldn't be the problem, but uh, that internetworking is may be a problem. Establishing cross organizational information infrastructure is what we do in in uh, most single part of it. Mostly it's silos, it's big silos where we do it now, but we have to do that interoperability uh, in very large silos. So that is, that is something totally different as we did before. So that is uh, uh, just to, to be sure. Also, because of short of time, um, please read it when you download my presentation uh, afterwards. Uh, we have um, uh, also the problem of high quality data for decision making, support and action alternatives. It's not the science problem by itself. All our effort is for decision making support and if there is no action, the whole thing would be useless. We need the action part in science, scientific terms, pragmatics, to go for full semiotic discussion. Syntax, semantics, pragmatics, that makes together the full semiotic discussion uh, of what we do. And you will see some of thoughts of that uh, later. Selected domains of current interoperability best practice. Uh, this is also kind of well known. Uh, it's only a short list of that. There is much more action, uh, of course, nowadays. Let's go to complexity management issues, a few of them, to, just to touch the problem, not to go into details. We have the complexity of facts, the complexity of context. Please note that separating facts from context is absolutely crucial because if you if, if you uh, if you give the, the impact or the boundary conditions on facts um, um you have to separate that also in the model so facts and context shouldn't be mixed too much in the in the analysis uh, and, and storage and models of data complexity of actors organizations Stakeholders, as also mentioned by, by um, Kegong, uh, stakeholders are those that are affected in a kind of uh, um, um, all of society uh, mode that is typically working by United Nations. So the demand is all of society, especially those that are affected or will be affected. Uh, maybe disaster, maybe uh, climate, maybe what, whatever uh, thing we, we talk about. We have to take them into the discussion for the governance and f for the, the aim of um, um, assisting their needs. That is also kind of from the, from the technical side. Um, in, the, in the lower part here, you see processes, workflows, reaction, um, goals reaching and effects and the, and their consequences not just to make a solution uh, from the from the from the uh, typical uh, data science uh, uh, things but also to see do we reach the goal do we have effects and consequences uh, on that transparency of algorithm procedures and abstractions the, the problem um, also here I can refer very nicely to Kegong introduction because you said in, in, in artificial intelligence we have that that demand it, if it becomes to very high complexity it's not only artificial intelligence we have the general problem that the transparency of what we do especially not only in data storage there we have complex data models but we have when we go to algorithms procedures and abstractions abstractions kind of generalizations for everyone, for every organization, for every level of decision and whatsoever, then, then we have a, a, a different kind of problem. That transparency ensures, ensures fairness, transparency, explainability and human oversight of algorithms, procedures and abstractions, collecting, processing and analyzing data from various sources to assess the opportunities of risk and socioeconomic impact, documentation and evaluation, auditing algorithms, procedures and abstractions with auditing, you know, I, I mean, I comp uh, making sure that there's, uh, uh, there's, uh, they are in, in line with uh, legal boundary conditions with everything that, that governance um, is, where governance is defined, 
we have to see that finally our uh, algorithms, procedures, and abstractions are in line with, with such boundary conditions. Multiple representations, that is also uh, too much uh, to go into details. That is why I kept that also for reading uh, for you in, um, in the end uh, for download. Let's shortly touch on pragmatics of process, process modeling. And process modeling, we have web compositions, workflows, action models, behavioral models, event chains, and dependencies in that uh, ontologies. And uh, that is uh, where we say um, an increased availability of business process execution data combined with advances in artificial intelligence has laid the ground for the emergence of information systems where the execution flows are not predetermined adaptions do not require explicit changes of software applications and improvements opportunities are autom autonomously discovered, validated and enabled on the fly. So that kind of complexity is uh, uh, really something new, which uh, needs a lot of uh, programs to, to deal with. And um, that is done with cloud computing, situation models, processes, standards, clearing houses, quality of service measurements, quality management of information, multiple representations, and the synergy that is made. In summary, um, there is time limit, timeliness implementation guided by principles of holistic information management are key prerequisites in societal, natural, technical, humanistic, and ethical aspects of the future of people and planet. And the aims of our doing is coherence and accountability improvements according to the expectations of information societies. The expectations are high, the expectations of our citizens. It's not the expectations of our colleagues. It's the expectation of our citizens that we are working for. You may join our sustainable information management uh, initiative uh, under the uh, susinf.net uh, also uh, see that today join us and for this short uh, presentation i thank you for your attention and uh, get in contact and here you see the link uh, of the presentation that will be that, that you can uh, download we also send that in the chat for those who are online thank you very much for this opportunity hi thank you Ms. Krimis, for his um perspective on critical elements of information digital um, strategy. It's introduced basic management principles and challenges for international legal instrument, instrument information management. Our second speaker is Professor Li Yan, the Vice President of Singapore Blockchain Association. His topic is Web 2.5 for Responsible and Sustainable Metaverse, a converged perspective. Professor Li Yan, please. Is uh, Leanne here? JC, is, uh, is Leanne? Hello, can you hear me? Hi, hi. Uh, yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, let me share my slides first. Great. Okay. Good morning and good afternoon for my friends in Europe, Africa and Shanghai. So it is my great pleasure today to share a certain, uh, certain new sort of scholars from Singapore. So, uh, and thank you very much for Professor Kramer's sharing and my sharing uh, things uh, I'm from a business school. So uh, my sharing will be more from a business perspective. So today's topic, my topic is the web 2.5 for responsible and sustainable metaverse. Well, uh, we present this uh, perspective, or we present this topic from a technology convergence perspective. So first, uh, what is uh, metaverse? Well, metaverse has been discussed uh, quite massively. And, you know, uh, if we trace back the metaverse, uh, we will find that, you know, the early edition of the definition is in fact from a novel, uh, from a science fiction. So in which it is mentioned that, you know, uh, there is such a thing called a digital world, which is a parallel uh, digital world of the existing real world. And, okay, next slide. Uh, 
Well, in this, uh, right, of course, uh, in China, right, or, or in, in, in the Chinese society, uh, people have a very different, uh, you know, perspective to understand uh, <laughs> what is metaverse here. I mean, we don't go that, we don't go that path. <laughs> we don't go that path. The thing is recently, right, recently, for example, uh, Professor Kevin Kelly proposed a new idea, which is called mirror work. So traditionally, we focus on artificial, right, virtual reality, right? We, we focus on mixed reality, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 augmented reality, uh, things like that. And today, instead of reality, uh, you know, we, we find a so-called a, a certain new technology of virtuality also emerged out. Uh, for example, uh, augmented virtuality, uh, real virtuality, mixed virtuality, and what well, extended virtuality. So the real world and the virtual world, to some extent today, technology may help us to get both sides uh, connected. Right? We, we don't really know how, uh, because it is a little bit too fictional or future-oriented, but we, we, we realize that the, the opportunity that this parallel virtual world can be a part of our reality or real world. Okay, then metaverse. Metaverse, in terms of the technology, it is already or it has been already developed as a ecosystem in which uh, we find almost all the elements of a real society, even though it is virtual, but in which we find all the elements, which is social oriented and also business oriented. Now also business oriented and, and the function from a technological perspective, the function is mature enough. Uh, then <laughs> let's take a look at the today's, uh, you know, even uh, the society is preparing for future, right? If today we ask a we ask some professionals, what is today's money? Then uh, the answer will not be like so traditional. And this is the definition of Bank of International Settlements, new definition of today's money, in which we will find tokens, NFTs, in which we will also find digital, you know, central bank digital currencies, including the Chinese digital yuan and the Singapore digital yuan, which are retail focused digital uh, currencies. And also in Singapore, we have a project Ubin, which is a wholesale international settlement focused digital Singapore dollar. Uh, so, and this is the money today, which is if we, if we turn back five years, mm -hmm. like, nobody seriously can conceive ideas, something like this, right? So, so new, new mega trend is emerging now in the virtual world and preparing us for the virtual world. Now the question, we have money defined by International Bank of International Settlement. Then uh, in the metaverse, from a business perspective, in that virtual reality, what will be our future money? And we don't really know. <laughs> we don't really know. And, and we may not know for a certain while, right? So, <laughs> however, we see evolutions. We see evolutions. For example, uh, NVIDIA is conceiving its so-called omniverse, which they defined as the metaverse of metaverse or the, uh, the, the, <laughs> the mother, mother of all metaverse. And they launched the service. Of course, they have, they have their theoretical, they have their theoretical groundings. So uh, today, right, right? Today, of course, uh, right? The, the journal of fix, function, fictional reality uh, today, uh, because of the rise of metaverse. Today, the, the, the early issues of journal of fictional reality uh, turns turns into uh, antiques. Uh, you, you can find those early early editions uh, very expensive in Amazon or, or some other antique market, <laughs> which established the background, not background, only background, uh, which also established the theoretical foundation of. Of, of metaverse. Okay, metaverse. Omniverse. Omniverse defined by Navidia as metaverse of metaverse. And we realized that leading mega firms, including a Pepsi Cola, right? Including those traditionally not necessarily that technology oriented firm, they are already trying to establish a whatever mirror kind of virtual company in the so called digital world, parallel. So not only those technology, Microsoft is doing what uh, Office Mesh, of course, for that we can easily understand. However, we have many, many other 
traditional, very traditional companies trying to establish their so-called uh, digital twins in metaverse. However, we have so many metaverses, so we must need a hub to connect all of them. This is the ambition of Navidia, right? From a traditional uh, so-called hardware company today, they are saying they are technology and fintech and what data company. Interestingly, we see uh, right, a metaverse is much, very much uh, Web3 based and traditional so-called digital economy are Web2 based. Well, here we don't have time to, 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 try, to uh, um, try to illustrate the difference of Web2 and Web3. But one thing which is quite clear, so Web2 are dominated by large firms, business firms or organizations, which are centralized, especially centralized in terms of governance and decision making. However, Web3 is more, if we can, we say uh, with more democracy, uh, with more shared what shared responsibility and, and, and decision making power, right? Or we will say consensus based, right? Consensus based of all participants of the of the web. Then well, however, very, very clearly we realize that our society, our way to organize of our people, right? Of our way to organize our people, work together, live together, for example, companies, societies, social structures, they are not yet ready for the early version of that technology and its implication, which means a lot of those scenario of applications, not really there, <laughs> not yet there, I will say. So, however, uh, however, Metaverse becomes not just a virtual world. It will be, we, 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 we expect uh, another layer of our existing physical world. And many, many governments, for example, government of Singapore, government of China, government of Japan are working on it. And here, at least in Singapore and in China, we see great potential to create new jobs. So that's the reason why we see a sustainable and responsive metaverse or metaverse policy will be so important for the near future, not the few, not the far future. And so, however, we propose things, social structure, corporate structure, right? You know, not yet ready, not yet ready for the new technology. That's the reason why we, we propose a convergence perspective a web 2.5 kind of understanding of metaverse. So in for web smila, right? We still need what we still need regulation. We can hardly make it fully decentralized. Regulation is a part of security instead of only using technology to protect the security of data, you know, data privacy of the system of web three, and also uh, 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 liquidities and, and 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 price actions are only favorable to those today. Uh, now, it's only favorable for those who's already in the industry, not necessarily for everybody as it is mentioned theoretically uh, with, with the technology, right? At the same time, Web2 companies, they are super powerful, they have deep pocket and they realize the potential, so they will invest and let's try to make them together. Uh, so let's try to put them together so that we propose a 2.5 kind of, you know, centralized, to some extent, centralized the governance and decentralized the operation. And this is also the logic of, uh, the logic has been applied in Singapore. For example, the Digital Singapore Dollar Project Ubing centralized, uh, centralized the governance and decentralized the operation with blockchain technology. Same thing of the digitalized, uh, digital Chinese Yuan. Chinese Yuan, not even apply, uh, not with blockchain technology. But centralize the governance, decentralize the uh, operation. So, uh, in summary, since we only have ten minutes, uh, in summary, Web three is moving toward to Web two. This is for pragmatic purpose. Not saying that the technology is reversely evolving. I know, uh, just practically <laughs> or pragmatically, uh, Web three is a little bit still way too advanced, and our social structure, especially corporate structure, cannot fully support. Uh, and not, not yet ready. We, we haven't figured out a way to fully apply, for example, uh, a decentralized autonomous organization really, really for business <laughs> to operate it. Uh, so of course, theoretically, we hope that in the near future, we, we, we may experiment, uh, we may experiment some, 
Okay, so, and at, the, at this moment, people say Web3 very inclu inclusive, but so far, IT literacy is a huge challenge. And when we say Web3 is good for inclusion for unbanked, for those in undeveloped country, right? Hardware easy to solve as a problem. Then what? The IT literacy, we have far, we have long way to go. We have long way to go. So it is not so inclusive as we imagine in our textbook or theory. <laughs> so, and also risks, uh, risks in terms of well, those, you know, those, those, those Web3 or Metaverse company formed with elites of technologies. However, not yet with elites of social scientists, not yet with elites of business world. And that's the reason why Web 2.5 may be more realistic, may be more fruitful for us to apply now and to push the evolution to Web3. Uh, to Web3 or a real future metaverse. And when we see that it's, we, we're not, you know, when we see the society is not yet ready and we need a Web 2.5 kind of convergence uh, 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 implementation of Web3 or metaverse. However, at the same time, we can hardly neglect the growth potential of this thing. And with ethical governance, with a uh, 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 sustainable and socially responsible development as a foundation, we hope and sincerely we hope new technology can once again push the evolution of human being. That's my sharing from Singapore representing uh, some sorts of Singaporean scholars. So this is not only my thing and thank you very much for hearing. Wow, thank you Professor Li Yan for a excellent explanation of Web 2.5. Well, so now let's move on to the third speaker. The third speaker is Professor Sun Wen, and she is from the School of Cybersecurity, known as the Polytech, Polytechnic University. Today, her topic is about building a trusted metaverse and shape, reshaping the concept of digital security. Let's welcome her presentation. Sunwen. Hi, Sunwen. Is that? Hey, hello. Hi. Hey, hello. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, I think the sharing doesn't allow me to share my screen. Uh, okay. Um, what can I do? Uh, Jesse, can you? And Suki. Suki? Can yes. You help me? I... Yes. Yeah. We can hear you. Please. I cannot share my screen right now. Besides that, the chair doesn't allow me to share my screen. Do we have, excuse me? Okay. okay. Oh, okay. Now I'm it's working. Now. All right. Now, now you're able to do that. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you uh, for the introduction of Prof Chen. And uh, uh, I'm very honored to uh, deliver a talk today about the uh, trusted metaverse and reshaping the digital security. I'm uh, Sun Wen from Northwestern Polytechnical University. Um, Metaverse today is a very exciting and hot topic, and it actually can closely integrate the virtual world and the real world in many aspects in economic, just talked by uh, Prof. Yan, and the social system, production, identity system, and allow all the users to participate and edit the world and uh, produce contents and uh, transfer their own digital assets. Uh, 
it can actually give us a lifelike experiences much more immersive than ever before and it can give us equal access to the uh, a lot of contents and the roles in a uh, metaverse and uh, it can create a new uh, economic value and uh, uh, make us to be better collaboration across uh, for people across religions and uh, uh, different countries uh, thanks to all these benefits metaverse can brought, bring to us it can find the promising applications although mostly are still under development like uh, the uh, video game commercialization uh, education manufacturing uh, tourism, uh, healthcare, and uh, uh, entertainment. Uh, just like uh, Prof Gong said, that uh, although we are ready to uh, have all the benefits that the metaverse can bring to us, we have to handle the threat, uh, potential threat, security threat they also bring to us. Like uh, we have a lot of new. Uh, new data types like uh, and we have the uh, digital identity we have to take care of the privacy of the people this is also very very challenging for nowadays and we have to uh, make uh, make uh, we have to take care of the network security uh, a lot of such things so the digital security actually the concept of the digital security has also evolved from the firstly only the communication in encryption computer security information security to the, uh, nowadays the cyber space security for the metaverse i think it's a holistic security it will include a lot of aspects like uh, including ai AI security, internet, IoT security, cloud communication, big data, and all of these uh, sum up the uh, digital security in the metaverse. Uh, so uh, digital space in metaverse, I think it has its own and intrinsic uh, characteristics. It has to be sustain sustainability, like uh, our topics of our workshop today. It has to be real time. It has compatible with a lot of other systems, and it has to be connect uh, connectable and uh, created uh, creativity. Uh, so correspondingly, the digital security in metaverse has also uh, met unprecedented challenges. Like uh, uh, we have to make the metaverse, uh, we have to make the uh, digital security to be situation aware, to per, uh, communication protection. Uh, we have to manage the different and diverse access and uh, uh, diff uh, diverse security certification, equipment uh, protection, uh, privacy protection, data protection and the edge security and uh, also the physical security so i think it's a, a very uh, a security problem actually cover diverse areas and diverse uh, entities nowadays uh, so from technology because i'm from the uh, like engineering and uh, cyber security so we also discuss how to protect the digital security in metaverse uh, we have discussed the uh, possibility that maybe use a blockchain for metaverse uh, blockchain of course can uh, make sure the valid uh, decentralization of uh, of digital assets and uh, can make the digital transfer safely yeah and uh, to make the management and the trading and authentication verification of metaverse to be uh, decentralized and safe for uh, metaverse and uh, uh, blockchain actually can uh, make the uh, identity management, data integrity, uh, data interoperability, 
and uh, make uh, ensure the quality of data, data privacy and security, and the seamless and secure data sharing in metaverse. Uh, now this we, uh, we just give give uh, an example. Uh, we have made a work about the blockchain. Uh, I think I think there is a temple, a uh, temple. Yeah, uh, we we have made a word about uh, discuss the uh, using blockchain and the facility learning for the metaverse security and the privacy. Uh, like users can uh, that can be uh, metaverse users or IoT devices, they can register to the blockchain with their data profile and run the local data. And the blockchain can uh, record and retrieve the data and uh, uh, verify models and to per to make sure that the data assets and the assets uh, update and uh, transfer to be safely uh, made among the. Uh, all the entities and uh, their benefits is to keep it decentralized and it uh, as it not uh, the centralized so it can uh, avoid the uh, point failure and uh, uh, it can keep consistency and it actually can make the uh, metaverse to uh, evolutionary with the uh, all the digital wins and uh, the fictions in the metaverse. Uh, so, uh, but uh, of course, there are a lot of challenges, uh, like uh, how actually, how we support the interoperability among the digital win and uh, like uh, and the blockchain for the uh, metaverse and how to improve the uh, energy efficiency and sustainability uh, at the same time with that uh, we can achieve a secure uh, metaverse yeah thank you thank you i think that's all for my talk thanks very much for your listening hi suki can you unmute uh, dr chen he's muted um, I'm Hi. not. She's back Hi, now Suki. on screen. Hi. Hi. Uh, can you allow me to use video? I just send it off. I'm not able to send it back. Okay, great. So, thank you, thank you for uh, thank you to Professor Xiongwen for sharing her excellent ideas about the challenge and potential solution to build trusted metaverse. And uh, our first speaker is Professor Daisy Salamita Sela from the University of Whit Whitwater Brand and Mr. Lazar. Sorry, sorry, your name is a bit difficult for me to pronounce. Uh, Lazarus and Matisse so so Sora Francis of Pretoria. And he's uh, sorry. And and their topic is advancing SDGs through open access repositories and open journal South Africa South Africa African academic library perspective. Let's welcome. Hi. Daisy, Professor Daisy, are you here? Professor. Hi, Dr. Ladarus. You can start your presentation now. Lazara? Okay. So it's quite difficult to have a, a, a joint workshop online. It's always tough. Lots of technical problems. Uh, so I'm here. Can you can you give us some? Hi, Doctor Lazarus. Are you okay. here? Maybe yes. yes morning. Maybe. How are you? Okay. Great. Finally, we hear your voice. Hi, Just give me a second. I will be on. Sure.
So I'm sorry that some technical issues here. Uh, Zaras? Hello, sir. Great. Yes, Shall I start? Uh, okay, I'm loading my presentation. <laughs> sure. Take your time. Uh, can you all see? Yeah, sure. Okay. We can, at, at least I, I can see your presentation. Morning, colleagues. Can I go ahead? Please switch to presentation mode. <sighs> Hello, can I go ahead? Please go ahead. Sure, please, please, please. <laughs> right. Um, thank you, colleagues. Uh, uh, my name is Lazarus Matizrofa. I'm from the University of Pretoria. I'm going to uh, talk about how we are advancing SDGs through open access repositories and open journal systems in the South African academia. And uh, as a librarian, I, it's a privilege to share with you some of the practical things that we are implementing in terms of um adhering to the metaverse uh, that we foresee happening with actualization of knowledge um, platforms and also interacting with the the the, the, the population so uh, it's 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 a project that um my university is hosting uh, we have a professor who has been um, um tasked by the government to ensure that the South African SDG hub is active, is collecting uh, knowledge or research outputs from the various research uh, um, 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 repositories uh, in the country. So uh, the objectives is to provide policymakers with access and to relevant research generated by higher education universities. And also in this, he, this project is part, it's, it's a partnership between the University of uh, Pretoria Library and also other higher education institutions and other research agencies in the country. The hub addresses three dimensions of significance, the national harvester, access, taxonomy, data, quality, unstructured, technical, and also as a hub, this is coordinated by a multidisciplinary team. So the, the, the way we have structured the, the hub is basically to address um, issues that knowledge should be actually be available for policy making and other um, interactions that uh, it, it, it may be required for. So this is we realized that there was a distance between policymakers and the research that is generated in universities. So the academic research distributed across repositories would then be able to reach the, uh, the policymakers or any other endeavor that is required for knowledge uh, creation and dissemination. So the South African hub overview, it's a harvester and we classify through the natural um, uh, language processing and also we serve a, a, a classification um, overlay that then imports and index the various um, knowledge as they are stacked in the in the harvesting system so so far the statistics that we have um, generated a total number of repository harvested is 34, and this also excludes other repositories outside South Africa, but that we think 
may be generating some South African contextual uh, knowledge. And number of articles, uh, metadata included is almost 210,000. And the accuracy of the repository is 80%, 85% of which it also has almost 12 uh, SDGs that we have targeted. And that's the link to the repository, to the hub. And the technical features, why we use national uh, natural language processing, is the natural language processing refers to the branch of computer science and more specifically to the branch of artificial intelligence or the concern with giving computers the ability to understand text and spoken words in much the same way human beings can. Why do we use classification of a traditional search? Traditional search relies on matching letters enables qualitative searching as well. And the bedrock, um, we have a bed and embedding. So the SA, SA hub will plot words with similar meaning close together. Uh, this single discovery underpins the natural language processing today. The technical features, it's, it harvests large scale open access repositories like I've mentioned, currently we're harvesting 38 repository from South Africa and other around the globe. Approximately 210 articles have so far been uh, harvested. Each repository is unique. The harvester is continuously improved and the challenge so far is metadata because we haven't trained all the repository managers to adhere to a certain uh, standard. That, um, so, so, so as libraries, this is what we are going to be embarking on to support the endeavors of the hub. So like I've said, the, the protocol, we, we use the open access um, uh, agenda in South Africa to address some of the harvesting of content from higher education um, universities. So basically, this ensures that whatever is made open is then harvested into the, the harvester. So how the libraries are managing, we establish a library expert teams to develop workflows for digital curation of local repository content. And this is some of the things that we are putting in place. So digitalization, digital curation, information literacy, digital scholarship, open scholarship, and therefore the discovery of services. So it's we are enhanced. Hence, um, and, and, and through proper metadata in future, all records would be uh, easily accessible. And so this is how we have envisaged our infrastructure for all South African repositories. Currently, our repositories were um, working independently and therefore their metadata was um, not uh, um, easy to harvest. So going for the future, the next generation of repository, we foresee that we are going to develop um, uh, unique features that will be global and ensure that the harvester can then be able to harvest all the content uh, in the same way across all the repositories. So this is just an illustration of how things will be in terms of interoperability and the persistent layers that we foresee happening, etc. So all the open access um, 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 uh, processes will be in place and libraries will then ensure that whatever they are generating or curating should then be harvestable based on the taxonomy that we are going to apply with regards to the SDG uh, taxonomy, the 17 SDGs. And so in South Africa, majority of our repositories uh, use this space, uh, which is globally used. And also for the on, uh, open journal systems, 
um, majority of the universities uh, are starting to enhance OJS as a platform to publish some of the local journal articles. So based on this, the indexing terminology will be then to use the, S the 17 SDGs over what we have already um, accurated. So we are going to also to do um, retrospective accuration of data to enhance the data so that all the previous old um, uh, outputs that speaks to all these SDGs will be reclassified and then be indexed in the, for the future. So this is uh, basically um, the, the discussion on this presentation. And um, my colleague, Dr. Daisy Selematsela is it will be also part of this platform for questioning uh, and answer session. So thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Lazarus, for his uh, excellent presentation on the uh, the uh, open access to the art libraries. Well, um, so we have the fifth and the last speaker, Professor Ricardo. His topic is about the importance of responsible and sustainable metaverse in legal education. Let's welcome Professor Ricardo from Mexico. Hi, thank you very much. I will try to share my presentation. Uh, yeah, so... So that means... Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Can you see it? Yeah. Perfect. So let's just start. Well, good night, good morning, good afternoon for everyone. Uh, I appreciate the invitation to the Internet Governance Forum for my colleagues and friends from China, from Singapore, for Germany, for South Africa, for all over the world and colleagues on this table. I will introduce myself. My name is Ricardo Israel Robles Pelayo. I'm a professor from the University of New Mexico, Anahuac Online and EBC. On this occasion, I'm going to talk about the importance of the responsible and sustainable metaverse in legal education. So I will go to the basics, to the classroom, if you allow me, because in my previous participation, I spoke about the importance of including the different technological tools created through the, and thanks to the internet to contribute to the education in different fields and levels. On this time, um, talk about first about the importance of using information technologies responsible mainly the metaverse in legal education. So subsequently, of the advantage and disadvantage of metaverse in legal education. And finally, I'll talk about the importance of the sustainable of the metaverse to increase the education quality inside and out outside the classroom. Using any time of technology tools in educational matters implies a constant responsibility for all of us participate in the academic world. So we must be aware of the following aspects. Since we started our investigation from the information obtained from the internet, we must distinguish between scientific news and fake news. On the other hand, plagiarism continues to be a bad habit that we continue to try to eradicate even at the postgraduate level. It seems obvious, but trust me, students keep making these kind of mistakes. It is also our responsibility as university professor to encourage students and other people involved in the education to create a reading of it through eBooks, taking advantage of the easy and speak of the online acquisition, acquisition and affordable cost. The incorporation of the learning management system in the different educational institutions with yeah. adequate didactic tools for each level has been yeah. an excellent option for the academic development of the students and the constant supervision of the professors. 
as I mentioned, the last May in World Summit of the Information mm -hmm. Society Forum 2022, the adaptation and incorporation of social media from mm -hmm. entertainment to education has contributed positively mm -hmm. to educational field. More and more colleagues use social networks such as Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, YouTube re release, an educational tool that is easily accessible and accepted by the students. The educational application allows for taking advantage of electronic devices creatively and efficiently. They are an easy to use and are different alternatives for professors and students. In my participation in the IEF 2018 in Berlin, I expressed the importance of taking advantage of big data to accumulate and store information from the generation and acquisition of knowledge. On the other hand, analytics is an effective tool for measuring, processing, analyzing and reporting the information obtained from big data and helps to create the strategies in education. Both digital instruments can be effective options for public education policies and contribute to increase the educational quality. Artificial intelligence predicts the future situations and make decisions that help, help us, as Mr. Gong, that I salute him, say, and say I am hello from Mexico, Mr. Gong, to avoid potential risk. Artificial intelligence is the most advanced technology today that must include in the education. In the case of our augmented reality and the metaverse, professors and students can live the experience of perceiving through the visual and auditory sense the different professional scenarios where they can apply theoretical knowledge and acquire significant learning. However, we must observe the following, the following disadvantage and we don't use a metaverse responsibly. It could affect productivity and access to the virtual legal education environment. The lack of insufficient technology structure and educational institutions for undeveloped countries will not create sufficient academic content to use as part of the argument augmented reality. The students lost interest in the learning tool and continue to have perception that augmented reality only works in games contained on social network. Many professors remain skeptically about the third learning through the immersive and multisensory environment and probably distorts the perception between the virtual and the real world. Therefore, they transmit and generate insecurity among students about the effectiveness of this teaching method. Another aspect to consider is the lack of teacher training for the creation of legal and academic content. Then use it, the metaverse according to the thematic contents. In addition, professor, professors and students at public university do not have sufficient economic or financial resources to implement technolog technological tools and students who have economic or financial resources run the risk of staying longer in augmented reality. It, it can generate addiction and loss of the notion of the real and augmented reality in the metaverse. One of the representative examples of the above is the website and application called Second Life. Consider from its exception an as multi-user massive online role play game platform and part of the entertainment programs. Now, this kind of platform is, is using around the world in different universities to include the education in this metaverse world. Now I'm talking about the advantage of using the metaverse in legal education. It helps us to carry out better cases analysis and bring us closer to reality created and controlled by the professor for a better understanding of the students. 
it also helps us to reconstruct the historical facts that can be presented in the legal controversy by presenting evidence in the simulated trial. In addition to above, it helps us to development of forensic skills for students before they are in the workplace, avoiding making a great number of errors. It also prepares for video trials where the parties are in different places and the judge is in different parts of the world. As we observe, technological tools have been constantly developed and implemented and are a great solution to global phenomen phenomena that occur in the accelerated manner. Augmented reality is a great support that allows to create complementary and special skills between those established by the academic theory and those obtained to the professional practice in the real world. In other words, metaverse is the link between the theory and the practice. Before finishing, I invite you to continue working together in the next IGF to enjoy efforts to create a responsible and sustainable metaverse in economical, social, and educational aspects, among others. And this is a great opportunity for us to learn about you, since I observe that you have the knowledge of the technical manner and to use all the political instruments in your countries, that would be a good idea to share all this kind of information to us that we are preparing for this next world that is now with us. So thank you very much for this invitation and I send you my, my a big hug for all of us. Ricardo, for his opinion on legal education and information, communication technology. So I think now is for our, because this is a round table, when now we start our, yeah, can our you open me? discussion. Yeah, sure. Can you, can you, oh, wow. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, sorry. Now it's okay for me. <laughs> thank you very much. Sure. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, finally I can access. Thank you all very much. Since all of speakers have finished their presentation, so, uh, we can start our open discussion now. And uh, first I want to, I have some physical questions for each one of us on the table. The first question is, what do you think about our main challenge when building an ecological, responsible, sustainable metaverse? Among these challenges, what are the technical challenges? So maybe Ricardo from you. <laughs> okay, I I will ask to. I would like to, to respond to the next question if you don't mind about the legal matters. Okay, this is this is also okay. <laughs> okay, perfect. So, as I said before, right, we can share a bridge of communication and exchange of information, and unfortunately, in my country there are not policies to increase the education quality. So as I heard from my colleagues from Singapore, they are centralizing the, all this kind of government solution. So I would like to know about how can we create these legal instruments in my countries. So this is very important for us that create first the legal instruments and then incorporate all this knowledge in our laws, in our, in all our codes, in, we can share that information also from uh, our point of view. So for us, it's a very good opportunity to be here and I am learning a lot and I share this information for my, for, for, to my students, sorry. And that's why we like to start first 
the political and the legal framework and then continue to work together with all your my colleagues around the world so thank you very much thank you very much so uh, mr creamers would you please uh, share some ideas about my question yeah thank you for uh, for such good question because the challenges uh, of course are very wide uh, nevertheless what what has not been mentioned um, to to the excess that that is really uh, not so easy to do is uh, the, the term of governance how do we how do we set up um, experiments of governance what is existing governance in certain cities universities countries um, uh, and so on and uh, because that would kind of go to the, to the point where do we have that all of society aspect with for those for those who the, the, the latest part of application is really meant it's not meant for the experts it's meant for our citizens and uh, are they involved and on this way and that is why I, I, I support the work of Ricardo very much is uh, uh, it's not only a thing that applying these methodologies in education, but also for me, the question will be, are the, the students that you educate able finally to conceive what is a problem with the universe, <laughs> with, with the metaverse? You see, to, to, to see the, the issues that are arising, transparency, everything that doesn't fit our regulation, our current regulations, what do we need for new regulations and so on. Uh, only then whole of society would be content and say, oh, now we are all happy with, with the whole thing. It needs a general legal framework. Uh, we need the people and the educated uh, 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 students uh, to support this technology. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Yanli, can you see something? Thank you for the question. Uh, thank you, my colleagues. Uh, my experience in Singapore is uh, quite unique because on the one hand, Singapore is relatively speaking very small. Smaller sometimes even than many towns in the world, right? For example, the Mexico City, yeah, comparing if we compare the population, right, this is even a small town, right? On the other hand, uh, Singapore has been in the past uh, with years of effort today becoming, uh, becoming one of the leading uh, financial hub instead of saying center of the world. So in this case, for us, education-wise, uh, the government fully realized those uh, so-called uh, emerging cutting technologies uh, future impact Therefore, uh, in Singapore, for this new technology, actually it is not a technology, which is a combination of comprehensive application of a group of cutting edge technology, right? So the government uh, has a very strong uh, understanding, which is regulation cannot go ahead of uh, implementation. Therefore, for example, even finance area, right? Singapore, we, we don't have central bank. It is called a, a monetary authority of Singapore, which is central bank plus regulation. So they created a so-called, uh, 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 let's say, a, a, a box. They call it, they call it uh, uh, you know, so for those new technology applications, uh, they, so, so for those new te technology, uh, uh, you know, you can apply to be tested in Singapore with real customer. Not, not, not. It's not, you know, a financial simulation. So they will invite. They will invite a, a, a high net wealth customer to participate in testing those new technologies, uh, uh, you know, uh, financial trading, so on and so forth, for example, crypto trading, and so on and so forth. And at the same time, government systematically, systematically, uh, you know, help universities and colleges to develop new courses and connect it with the banking industry. So in Singapore, we have a very comprehensive banking industry in which you can find 
all 400 of those leading banks in this very small town. Therefore, a theoretical new technology and, 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 and impl implementations are kind of very well organized together. And one thing is also very important, which is also unique, that in Singapore, not like in many other cities, in Singapore, we compete with global talents. So there's no such a thing called local. So <laughs> we compete with global talents. So we're fully aware of anything which may uh, create future potentials or also threats in terms of technologies, in terms of education, and in terms of practice. That's the reason why today uh, for Metaverse, uh, and, and we can we, 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 we can to some extent argue, right? Uh, Singapore is one of the global center of metaverse in terms of technology, in terms of venture capital, and in terms of uh, education, especially education. So that, 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 that's my sharing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Uh, Lazarus, can you say something? Mr. Lazarus, can you say something? Can you hear me? <laughs> okay. Okay, you there- to talk. Uh, I wanted yes. to talk. Yes. But yes. then the video, my video is not coming up. Okay, thank you. Uh, from my uh, perspective, and especially looking at my institution, we have been discussing the issues around metaverse and what are the implications like what Ricardo highlighted. And I think it's important that we, are, we all acknowledge like Ricardo indicated the issue about the legality. And my concern is there are HR elements, human resources elements that are going to transform and change. And the issue is, are we ready? And how do we get ourselves ready for the new roles that we are going to assume and the jobs that are going to unfold. And the second element would be technology. How are we then embracing these technologies and ensuring also how are we going, especially us who are in the practice side where we are, we are supporting the teaching and learning. For example, from the library side, how do we then use the technologies that are there and the spaces, what we call marker spaces, where students come and learn and sit and read how do we use those spaces, uh, make sure that those spaces are, are quite engaging? And then going back again to say, how do we equip ourselves and transform ourselves for the new world of work when it comes to human resources? Because uh, the way we do things is changing already. I mean, we were talking about crypto. We have now migrated from crypto. And now we're talking about what the metaverse actually is going to do and is doing in education. And we need to start forming hubs, developing hubs, hubs in our universities, for example, research hubs, where then students can go in and learn and see this plethora of new innovations. Yeah, that's our, my take from our side and Lazarus. The issue around okay. human resources, so how are we going to deal with that and that associated technologies? Thank you, thank you, thank you. That, thank you very much. My last question is about how to build a policy framework. I will give you, I will care, give everyone maybe 30 seconds, 30 seconds to express your opinion. How to build a policy framework, please. Uh, Professor Gong Ke, Gong, are you here? Yes. Uh, Actually, uh, that's a, a serious uh, a challenge to the uh, international and, and the national uh, society to, to build a legal framework. Because on the one side, uh, we need technical innovation of metaverse, uh, the old, uh, those emerging technologies. So uh, we have to avoid uh, improper uh, uh, regulation to uh, resist or uh, constrain the information. But on the other hand, we have to identify the risks that may or will uh, uh, brought about by those new technologies. So uh, in that case, uh, a new uh, 
a new concept, uh, which is called uh, agile uh, um, governance, is proposed by some professor. But personally, I, I, I really don't know how to uh, reach such an agile government. So uh, I do uh, uh, consider the recommendations of UNESCO on the ethics of uh, artificial intelligence. That's to, to set a cornerstone starting from ethical principles. So I think that could be the first step for us to use to governance the development of metaverse and so on and so forth. So starting from the uh, bottom line, that's ethical principles. So that's my view. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Gong. And uh, Mr. Klimas. Yeah, thank you. I think um, for the policy framework, uh, a lot of things that we, we have to compile what was said today uh, under the aspect of policy framework uh, demand. And then, of course, policy framework would need in its wording a broad uh, 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 participation of those involved in not only the typical sciences but also the legal aspects uh, uh, to be dealt with that is that is near society and society has to understand that we are, have to go uh, with that policy we have to go into society because it's for them and they are involved they are they are uh, uh, attracted <laughs> some some have their critics and we have to to build a a a, a, a possibility to share uh, p potential uh, positive things and the critics, and uh, then go on and see that policy making is a rather long term, uh, permanent, in steps, you see, in phases. Uh, uh, a renewed policy every one year, two year, the more innovative the technology, the more frequent the, 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 the policy needs to be updated. I think some. United Nations organization would be fine and that of course had to take into account what is already on the table nationally or transnationally. Thank you. Thank you very much. Professor Daisy. I think following up to what Horst indicated, what's important is the uptake and the understanding on how we can merge the principles of metaverse with what we are talking about when we talk about open science and uh, the big picture of open innovation. How do we map together and then it's not in isolation? And I think that's going to be the legal hurdle that we need to deal with. And secondly would be then the political will and buy-in from our, our institutions and also the spend on science and innovation, you know, how funds are being dispersed and grants uh, to ensure that we can actually have more done and research in this area. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Professor Ricardo? I I do agree. I, I think the, the problem that we face, in, uh, at least in Mexico, is that we are creating the law slowly since the uh, all the technological uh, instruments are like two, three steps ahead. So it's very difficult for our Congress, for our parliament to understand what happened in, in this technological matter. So if we are now concerning about, for example, the blockchain or the all kind of these, these financial instruments, then I think that our government is, he thinks or they think that the metaverse is a kind of movie from Hollywood and they don't understand very well what is going on on this situation. So first of all, I think we have to concentrate that the techni te technological problems, they are always ahead of us, as I said, and they, we have to prepare for that. So. I think it's a, it's a, it's a, big, a huge problem in these matters in my country. Thank you. And I uh, want to uh, contact Hang Sai, the moderator. Ms. Suki? 
Okay. Yes, hello. I mean, uh, the thing is that we are now running late, so uh, people started leaving the room now, so maybe we can come to enclosure? Okay, okay. Okay, for sake of uh, time and limitation, so I want to express our most profound appreciation for to to all experts for their excellent presentations. To the online and on-site participants for their uh, questions, and uh, of course, uh, to more moderator and organizers for making this workshop happen. I think the metaverse is still in its early stage, and all of our challenges and governance issues in building a responsible and sustainable metaverse cannot be solved simply by a workshop and or discussion. So, uh, I think this workshop is not the end. It's not the end, but the beginning of the establishing cooperation mechanisms between multiple uh, stakeholders to address issues of metaverse. It needs our effort to build a safe, reliable metaverse. So thank you very much. So it's time to close the session. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for late uh, several minutes. Sorry. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yes, Thanks. Bye-bye. Keep in touch. Keep in touch. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Please note, uh, note the, the proposal made by Horst. In the chat. Okay. That's a good idea. Okay. <laughs> so, bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Ricardo. Thank you very much. No, thank you very it's much. Very early, yeah. It's the morning, right? <laughs> so yeah, it's very morning. Yeah. Big hug from here. Okay. I, I hope to see you soon. Face to I face. I hope so, too. See ya. See you. See you. <laughs>